Hi, my name is James and I'm the Buildification Leader here at FoodShare. Today, I'm going to show you how to turn one of these into one of these. In addition to a road bike and a stationary trainer stand, you'll need the following materials. An Oster brand blender. Make sure it's the old style with a detachable plastic ring at the top. A rear bike rack. A piece of 5 8 inch plywood, about 12 inches by 16 inches. A piece of clear polycarbonate. A 3 8 inch drill chuck with a chuck key. Four two inch by one quarter inch bolts, eight one quarter inch washers, and four one quarter inch nuts. A plastic buckle and about four feet of webbing. Lastly, you'll need a tube of weld bond glue, some number eight one and a half inch screws, and some number eight half inch pan head screws. Disassemble the blender base by undoing the three screws that attach the bottom cover and removing it. Disconnect the power cord, unscrew the top of the metal drive shaft, and remove the fan from the bottom of the drive shaft. Disconnect the colored wires. Undo the screws that hold the chassis in place and remove it. Remove the two screws that attach the plastic rim to the top of the blender base and set it aside. Undo the two screws that hold the chassis together and take it apart. Cut the wires and remove the copper windings from the middle section of the chassis. Set aside the plastic ring, the three parts of the chassis, the drive shaft, the two screws that held the chassis together, and the top interface. Cut pieces for a new base from 5 8 inch plywood. Cut the top cover and guard from the polycarbonate. Mark the center of the top piece and trace a circle the size of the inside of the ring. Cut this hole out by drilling a hole with a large drill bit and then using a jigsaw. Take the top piece of polycarbonate, trace a hole the same size as the one you just cut in the plywood, and cut it out using the same method. Take the bottom piece and cut out a 1 and 5 16 by 2 and 3 8 inch rectangle, centered on a 6 by 6 section of the plywood. Insert the bottom piece of the chassis into this hole to make sure it fits. Trace the middle section of the chassis centered on the middle plywood piece and cut it out. Insert the middle section of the chassis into this hole and reassemble the chassis around the plywood. Attach the plywood sides to the plywood top with one and a half inch screws. Place the middle plywood with the chassis in position and then attach the plywood bottom to the sides with one and a half inch screws. Fasten the drill chuck to the bottom of the drive shaft and tighten it with the chuck key. 
We attach the top interface to the top of the drive shaft by screwing it back on. Using two short pieces of 2x4 as a stand, place the plywood base upright. Place the plastic ring and blender jug on top of the base. Shift the jug and chassis until the blade assembly rotates easily when you turn the drill chuck. Trace the outside of the ring on the plywood top. Use a pencil to make two marks on the outside of the plastic ring in line with where the screw holes are on the bottom. Transfer these marks to the plywood and then make marks the same distance in from the edge as the screw holes. Unscrew the plywood top and drill two 1 8 inch holes in the plywood for the screws that will attach the ring. Place the polycarbonate on top of the plywood and drill holes in the polycarbonate where the six screw holes are. Remove the protective film from the polycarbonate and then, with it in place, screw in the ring from below. Attach this whole top assembly to the rest of the plywood base. Lift the chassis up until the top interface fits into the slot in the bottom of the jug. Adjust the position until you find a spot where the blades spin freely and mark the position of the center piece of plywood. Attach this piece to the sides with one and a half inch screws. Put the base back on the stand and test to make sure that the blade still turns smoothly. Drill a 3 quarter inch hole in the center of the polycarbonate guard. Remove the top assembly, unscrew and remove the top of the drive shaft, and attach the polycarbonate in position on the underside of the top assembly with half inch screws. Reattach the top assembly and replace the top of the drive shaft. Turn the box upside down and place the two 1 inch by 8 inch braces 5 eighths of an inch in from each side. Drill a 1 quarter inch hole through the end of each brace and the bottom of the blender base, making sure not to drill too deeply and accidentally drill through the center piece of plywood. Attach the braces temporarily using the nuts and bolts. Apply glue to each of the three teeth inside the chuck and then carefully mount it back onto the bottom of the drive shaft. Tighten it with the chuck key and spin it with your fingers to make sure it is centered properly. When you find the sweet spot, fasten it tightly as possible. Place the box on its side and apply glue to the small gap beside the jagged teeth on the outside of the chuck. Smooth this glue out with a small piece of scrap cardboard and let it dry for at least 24 hours. Mount the bicycle in the training stand and attach the rack to the rear of the bicycle. Once the glue has cured, mount the blender base on the rack with the drill chuck pressed up against the left sidewall of the tire. Attach the box to the rack by fastening the braces with the bolts and nuts, clamping the bike rack between the box and the braces. Test the blender by cranking a pedal slowly and watching to make sure that the chuck is spinning. Thread the webbing through one side of the buckle, run it from the underside of the top piece of the box to the top of the blender jug, and then cut it double that length. Fasten both ends to the underside of the box with a small screw. Thread the leftover webbing through the other side of the buckle. Fasten one end to the underside of the box, clip the buckle together at the top of the blender jug, and tighten it snugly. Test the blender again by cranking the pedal slowly. If the chuck comes out of contact with the tire at any point in the rotation, loosen the nuts, push the box so the chuck presses up against the tire more snugly, and tighten the nuts again. Now you get to enjoy the fruits of all that hard work. Our favorite smoothie recipe involves two bananas, a handful of frozen berries, a couple of pitted dates, and water to fill. If you're feeling adventurous, you can also add some chopped spinach or another green. Put the lid on and pedal away.